So do you have a north-facing garden or even a north-facing bed, a shady strip at the side of your house? I've just seen a really pretty north-facing garden. It's very narrow, it's only 18 feet wide at its widest and it actually tapers down to being just 10 feet wide and it's on a slope so it's a garden with considerable challenges but it's really pretty and I think it's got tips for all of us. It's Alexandra here from the Middle Size Garden YouTube channel and blog. The garden belongs to Richard and Jackie Drew and it's a Victorian terraced house but the way they've done it is so clever it just you don't notice the boundaries you don't notice how shady it is and you don't notice how narrow it is so I asked Richard and Jackie for their tips. Now tip number one is that shady gardens can be mainly green a lot of there are flowers that flower in the shade but there's often quite a lot of green around so if you want to add color add, add it with pots with furniture with even painting the windows and doors in your house and Richard and Jackie have even painted their pavers on their terrace they didn't like the pavers that were there when they moved into the house and so they've actually painted them with an ordinary floor paint it's not supposed to be used outside but it seems to be doing okay They've also used cushions and throws. So when I went into the garden, I just had the impression of it being a really pretty and colourful garden, even though it was a very drab day. They've been quite tightly controlled on the colour too. I think a colour theme works well if you have a very small area, particularly if it's very narrow or very dark. The next tip is to blur the boundaries. If your garden is very narrow, you may be tempted to save space to have fences instead of hedges, to get rid of trees to create more light, but all of that will emphasise the shape and size of your garden. If you blur the boundaries, you can borrow the trees and growth from your neighbours and from the end of the garden. And that's what Richard and Jackie have done. Rather than cutting down trees, they've planted them, and they've used a space-saving hedge, which is ivy. The garden has a very wildlife friendly focus to it and ivy is a wonderful, wonderful plant for wildlife because it flowers in the winter and it also has berries so it offers shelter and food for birds and insects. And it doesn't take up as much space as most shrubs do. It'll climb over a fence or even a wire fence and take up very little space and provide you with a green hedge. And Richard also has left trees in and planted extra trees. Trees add a lot to a narrow garden because they provide a vertical space. Your eye goes upwards. You can often plant climbers into trees and obviously they provide shelter for wildlife and they're very good for air quality. Richard's clever tip here is to create some more light by removing some of the lower branches of a very big tree that's close to the house. And down the end of the garden, he's been particularly clever because you can't really see where the garden ends. There are hawthorn trees on the other side of the fence and so he's planted another hawthorn tree on this side of the fence and painted the fence a very dark green. So it looks as if this is a path going into a dark forest of hawthorn trees. Really a very clever trick. One of the things they decided is that they couldn't have a lawn in a narrow shady garden. The lower part of the garden, which is much narrower, has basically got a path through the middle with planting on either side. But where it's 18 feet wide, they've taken away the lawn and they've replaced it with a very charming pebble and gravel effect. The pebbles are pale, they throw the light up and they make it seem much lighter and they've got plants coming out of the gravel so it almost looks like a dry garden. And there's a very clever trick here where they've used a dark pebble down the middle as if it was a stream. In a north facing or shady garden or border, start by choosing plants that are happy in shade. You'll always see that on the label and it makes a huge difference. So most of the plants in Richard and Jackie's garden are shade loving plants. Even so, there are exceptions. There's an achillea here and there's a viper's blue gloss and both of those are sun loving plants, but they're doing very nicely coming out of the pebbles in the back garden. So if there's a plant you particularly want to have in your garden or someone gives you a plant, well, give it a chance. Plant it, just don't expect too much. But sometimes you'll discover that plants that are not supposed to like shade will actually be fine. And what about seating areas for a shady garden? Well, any garden has usually got somewhere which is a sunny spot. So put some chairs or a bench down there or a table. Richard and Jackie have got seating areas all over their garden. There are four. There's one in the front garden and there are three in the back garden. So whatever light there is, they can make the most of it. 
There's another little clever touch here with the pots. These boxes stop the pots being blown off the wall or knocked off the wall by cats. Richard and Jackie support wildlife as much as they can, so there are about 10 bug hotels in the garden. There are a couple of hedgehog house houses and there are also little hedgehog gates because hedgehogs need quite a wide amount of space to travel in. And if you can have little holes in your fences, then hedgehogs will be able to go from garden to garden and that makes all the difference. They also have five mini ponds. In a small and narrow garden, it's very difficult to find space for a big pond. They've got three mini barrel ponds and two small ponds dug into the earth. One of them has been colonised by newts and in the others, the frogs spawn. And Richard says, if you build wildlife friendly features, the wildlife will come. If you'd like more garden design tips, there's a garden design playlist at the end of this video. And if you'd like more tips, ideas and inspiration for your garden, then do subscribe to the Middle Sized Garden YouTube channel. And thank you for watching. Goodbye.